Hey everybody, thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're gonna be talking about a pistol that flies underneath the radar for a lot of different people. And I kind of scratched my head as to why it had flown underneath my radar for so long. I kind of have an understanding of why that is. We'll get into that. But uh, realistically, let's talk about it. We are gonna be looking at the Beretta APX. Now, this pistol is very, very interesting for a number of different reasons. Not only is it a Beretta pistol, but this was also Beretta's first entry into the polymer frame striker fired pistol arena in addition to that this was beretta's submission to the xm17 mhs program so that is two very peculiar situations that beretta pushed themselves into in addition to that like i said with this being their first entry into the striker fired polymer frame you know arena uh, that's way different than what Beretta normally does. You guys know that Beretta has produced the 92FS or the 92 series for a very long time. It was adopted by the US military in the mid 1980s as the M9 and is extremely popular by a lot of people. Now, this has flown underneath my radar for a little bit of time because I carried an M9 in Baghdad, Iraq in 2003 for an entire year and I could not stand that pistol. Could not stand it. Now, I'm honest enough to admit that that had nothing to do with the 92FS or the M9 itself. It had to do with the pistol that I was particularly carrying for that year in Baghdad. It was garbage, but it did lead me to be biased against Beretta for a very, very long time, which is why I never really considered looking into this pistol or the last few years. It has been around for about three, four years now. And one of the great things about this pistol is since it's been around and kind of flown underneath the radar for a lot of people, the price has dropped quite considerably. This is well under $500 and you can find it as cheap as $369 on the interwebs right now. So that is something that I really, really uh, found interesting about a duty grade pistol. So let's talk about a lot of the features that's going on with this pistol. I wanna talk about some things that I like about it and some things that I don't like about it as well. But before we get into that, let's take a second to talk about us. Can we talk about us for a second? I really do appreciate your guys' support. Realistically, you're the sponsor for this video. And I would ask you guys, if you think that I deserve it, go ahead and click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell as well. Uh, I would also appreciate if you guys would share this video. That's the best way to support this channel is just to get the word out on what I'm doing. Hopefully I'm providing you guys with some great information. And if you think I also deserve it, thumbs up and a comment would help the algorithms as well. So again, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. Let's get back into talking about this pistol. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, the size of this pistol is going to be very similar to that of the Glock 19X. It's going to be just a touch longer than the 19X, but realistically, the frame is going to be that of a duty size 17 round capacity magazine frame. So uh, this is going to fit very well in most people's hands. Unless you have ginormous ham hocks, uh, this is going to fit very, very well. Next feature that we're going to see on this pistol is going to be the slide serrations, and that is something that's going to distinguish it from other pistols. And this is what I'm going to call a reversed slide serration. Typically, serrations are going to be milled into the slide. However, these seem to have been uh, milled out of the slide, meaning the slide has been milled around these slide serrations, which is uh, interesting. It gives you good positive grip along the slide for uh, manipulating the pistol, whether that be racking the slide or doing press checks or whatever the case may be, uh, if you do those types of things. So that's interesting. Uh, three dot steel dovetailed sights on this, which is going to be pretty standard for any type of duty pistol. Uh, it's going to have a decent 
texturing on the p pistol grip. It's not over aggressive. It's not under aggressive. Uh, I think that it could be more aggressive, but um, it's okay. It does have finger grooves on the front side of the uh, pistol grip, but it's not overly uh, intrusive like a Glock 19 Gen 4 or a Gen 3. It does have a rail up here for you to mount all of your whiz bang gadgets up front and then uh, it's going to have a trigger safety much like that of a Glock. As I mentioned this is going to come with two 17 round magazines. These are steel magazines and uh, missed opportunity here. We'll get into that here in just a second. So that is kind of an overview of what's going on with this. Let's talk about the things that I like about this. I've already talked about the slide serrations. I really do like not only the aesthetic look of these serrations, but the functionality as well. It is very easy for me to get a good firm grip on this slide and do any type of manipulation, whether that be uh, just doing a slide release on a new magazine or if I'm going to, like I said earlier, press check makes it extremely easy to do that. The magazine release is very easy to get to with your thumb. I have Doug Flutie hands so they're not very large and I'm able to actuate that magazine release which is something that I really do like. The serial numbered item is going to be the trigger module. Uh, so basically the internals of this pistol is going to be what is serialized. So in the future, if Beretta or aftermarket uh, companies would want to produce a new frame for this, then you could swap out that module. And that's something that you see a lot of companies starting to do, not only with the P320, but also with the IWI Masada and the Beretta APX. A lot of these companies are putting trigger uh, modules into the serial numbered item as the serial numbered item rather uh, so that people can uh, change out the grip the frame to either something that is more in line with what they want or um, you know if there's a crack in it or something they can easily swap that out and don't have to worry about any type of uh, serial number issue with that it does come with uh, two additional back straps I normally don't change those out because realistically the one that comes with it, the medium size that's usually installed is just fine for my hands. Let's talk about the trigger on this. Uh, trigger is going to be pretty standard for any type of striker fire pistol. It's going to have a little bit of take up. It's going to have some creep in that trigger and then it's finally going to break over. The reset on this is audible and tactile, but I do believe, in my opinion, it feels a little soft on that reset, but it is still right against a good solid wall, a little bit of creep, and then finally it breaks over. Now, I will say the weight on this trigger seems to be a little heavier than that of a Glock trigger. Um, I'm not gonna say it's bad, it just seems a little bit heavier and that's something I could pick up when I was doing slow, deliberate shooting at the range and putting the first couple hundred rounds through this. All right, so let's talk about the things that I'm not overly impressed with. First and foremost is going to be the design of the slide. Uh, now I do like the serrations on this, but the slide has this angle in the front and an angle in the rear and while I understand that Beretta was doing that to distinguish them from the competition, from basically Glock, so they're not called the Italian Glock, <laughs> uh, I, I think that if they just would have made the rear and the front of the slide vertical, they could have extended the sight radius on this about a half an inch. And that may not sound like very much, but Realistically, for people who shoot at a very high level, which most people don't, but competition shooters and stuff like that, that half inch could really help accuracy in the long run. Another issue that I ran into with this pistol was something that had been talked about from Chad and Eric of Iraq Veteran 8888. They were having issues with accuracy on this. They could put a several rounds on top of each other, and then they would have a round that would be like a foot off. And they were admitting that, you know, possibly that could be them, but it was consistent. I found that I had the same issue as well. Now, if I'm being honest, could that have been me? 
sure, I'm, sh I'm going to take full responsibility in saying that it could have been me, but I tried several different, um, two different types of ammunitions, uh, Winchester 115 grain and Federal 124 grain, and both of these I was able to put several rounds into a good group and then would have two or three rounds that would be six to nine inches off of that group. Again, that could just be me getting used to this trigger and the setup and the ergonomics and everything. But then again, when you have other YouTubers who have reviewed this pistol having the same problems, there's that as well. And then the other thing is the missed opportunity is these magazines. Had Beretta figured out a way to utilize the Beretta 92FS magazines, I think this would have given them a leg up on the competition for the XM-17 MHS program. The military already has M9 or 92FS magazines in stock. That would, be, that would be something that they wouldn't have to do at all to change. About the only thing that they may need to do is order new base plates or something to that effect, but they could have reused those magazines to fit into this pistol. And I think that that, again, would have given them kind of a leg up and kind of reduced the cost to the U.S. government in purchasing this pistol and winning the contract. Would that make a difference in the long run against the Glock 19X or the P320? I don't know. But that little thing, that cost-cutting uh, scenario that... Breda could have worked into the development of this pistol could have really changed uh, the outcome of that program. Finally, what are my thoughts on this pistol overall? Um, I like it. I do like this pistol. Uh, again, I'm not necessarily the biggest Beretta fan um, because of my personal emotional opinions about my time in Iraq with the Beretta M9 that I carried, but uh, overall, if I'm being objective, I think that this is a really great pistol for, um, you know, home protection, home defense, uh, something that you can keep, you know, locked up in your nightstand, uh, ready to go for anything that goes bump in the night. But I don't think that this is going to be a great pistol for someone to carry. It's just a little bit too large for someone to adequately conceal carry this in a, an appendix position. You might be able to get away with it on the three or four o'clock position if you're wearing a hoodie or a jacket or something like that. But for me and my frame, my body size, uh, I don't think I could very easily conceal carry this pistol. But for a duty, law enforcement, military, home defense, type of uh, purpose, I think this does very, very well. Um, I would make sure that if you did pick this up, that you would run several hundred rounds through this to make sure that you're used to not only the ergonomics, but the trigger and the sight alignment, uh, to make sure that uh, my complaints, my issues about the accuracy are just me and not the pistol itself. And verify that uh, with your own pistol should you pick one of these up. Again, these are coming in well under the $500 range, which makes it a great value. But that's just my opinions. I wanna hear what you guys have to say. Sound off in the comment section down below. Have you experienced the Beretta APX? Uh, are you guys intrigued with Beretta's introduction into the striker fired arena? Uh, striker fired pistol arena, that is. Um, what are your thoughts on the subcompact version or even the Centurion Combat, which is their newest version that's coming out? That one's coming in right around that $550, $600 range. It's going to have a threaded barrel and um, I think it's suppressor height sights and uh, better ergonomics on the grip and stuff like that. So sound off in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so very much for joining me on this edition. We're going to run this pistol uh, a little bit more, get some more rounds through it. This is kind of my initial thoughts on it, uh, only having a couple hundred rounds through it so far. So stay tuned. I'll have a follow-up video on this. And we're going to compare it against the M17 that I have and let you guys know what I think. Um, really kind of the biggest differences are between those two pistols. With that being said, like I said, we'll get out of here. Thank you so much. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.